Hello, I'm Dennis Long, the National Technical Service and Development Manager for Belsham USA. So today I would like to talk to you about uh, what TUF IBC is, how adding it to the tank is going to increase control of the other herbicides, and the reasons why the additional expense per acre is warranted, how you can sell that. And at the end, we're going to talk a little bit about our newest product, Tougher. Okay, why have we invested millions of dollars to bring Tough back into the market? You know, it was on the market 20 something years ago, uh, but this slide really just shows why. We are losing herbicides left and right to resistance. Uh, you can clearly see, all right, your group 27s, uh, you, you, that's your, your, your HPPDs, your, your group nine, that's your Roundup, at fives, your atrazines. We're, we're, we're losing them all, but you'll see, or you will not see any circle that has a group number six. There's no resistance to tough. It's still a viable, valuable, herbicide tool to be used in, in our battle against this resistance. Okay, so what is Tough IBC? It's formulated as a five pound per gallon EC. It's only a post-emergence product, only contact activity. So coverage is gonna be very key. We'll explain that here in a minute. You're gonna see, and you'll see it in the field, that it enhances the speed of kill of everything you put it in the tank with. Rain fast in an hour. There's no residual of this product. And that's kind of a good thing uh, because there, there's no crop rotation restrictions whatsoever. It's also there, there's no groundwater or leaching issues. So what's the window of applica application? W when do we recommend to use uh, of tough? Well, here you can uh, before the season begins, you can use it in the pre-plant burndown, tank mix it with your other products and chemistries. All right, pre-emergence, do not use it pre-emergence. Uh, on sandy soils, we can see some injury. We don't want to see that, and it's not labeled for that. It's only post-emergence. And the thing here is that it has a wide application window all the way up to the eight-leaf stage, V8. And that's good it, it, because a lot of your other chemistries like your HPPDs, et cetera, can go, can go up to that stage. But atrazine, hey, it's a great compound. I'm going to talk to you here in a minute. We're not trying to, to, to eliminate atrazine, put it in a tank with, with tough, but Past that V5 stage, you can't use uh, atrazine anymore. Tough is that, 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 that's an unmet window that you could target to, to uh, um, sell the product. What kind of weeds are we looking at talking about? All right, we're going to talk so, some about Palmer amaranth, kochia, um, common water hemp. We, we don't have time to discuss all the other weeds, but it, it's broad spectrum. Um, we talked about no resistance to uh, tough. So this is data for, for kosher from K-State la uh, last year. Uh, and to the left here is a non-resistant population, a pint or a half a pound of atrazine. Hey, you're still getting almost 90% control. Tough by itself, you're getting a very good level of control. When you mix tough and atrazine together, you get a very high level of control. Now, what happens when you apply that, that pint of atrazine to an atrazine resistant population, 5% control doesn't work. The key to this slide is that tough on that atrazine resistant population gave almost 100% control. So there's no cross resistance to uh, atrazine. All right. Well, how, how you know, talking about adding uh, tough in the tank with atrazine. Well, let's show some data to, to, to prove um, that increased efficacy. So here to the left, and this is common water hemp, Roundup by itself, hey, we're, we're pushing maybe that 70% control adding a full major rate of atrazine to the tank did not really help. Cause you know, some of these are, are larger weeds, 14 inch. We don't want to be there. This is research trials, but look what simply happens when you add eight ounces of tough to the tank. We're pushing that 90% level of control. So adding the two together really helps. That was water hint. What about Palmer amaranth? All right, this same data here, the same, same conclusions, just a different weed. Uh, adding the two together, but but this one, uh, you, you know, looking at Roundup by itself, Roundup plus Callisto, um, get that 80% control. Adding tough to the tank gets us to that almost 100% level control. That gets us uh, uh, where we need to be, and also for um, re reducing adding seeds to the, the seed bank. Now, this is data from HPPD resistant Palmer Amaranth. This is work from, from this year. It's really, really new uh, data. And what we're looking at is 
um, synergy? Can we can we prove that tough can synergize the HPPDs like atrazine does? This data clearly shows that. Um, but again, I'd like to point out to you here, when you added atrazine and tough together, we're getting a high, high level of control. And so Dr. Pat Trunell, it, 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 this is his quote, uh, it, tough is a synergist equivalent to atrazine. All right, so this is, you know, we only, we only had time to talk about a few weeds here today, but this is data uh, or, or recommendations from this year's weed control guide. What I just want to point out to you that is that uh, tough enhances control of these HPPDs on a broad spectrum of your broadleaf weeds. So you're going to get a lot of value by adding it to the tank, not just on the weeds that we're going to be discussing here today. What if we head a little bit to the West? What does K-State think about using tough? Same scenario here. Um, of course, we always, we've known atrazine is the center just for the HPPDs, but now they're also acknowledging you can put eight to 12 ounces tough in the tank as well. And you can go up to that V8, your tapramazone recommendations, your topirolate. All right, let's talk a little bit about how we interact with dicamba. Can we make that classic chemistry work better? This data clearly shows that. And this is a greenhouse trial on dicamba resistant kochia. We, we know that status is not working very well uh, anymore uh, on kochia. Simply adding eight ounces of the, to the tank with, with a five ounces of status got us a very good uh, level of control. All right, what about some other classes of chemistry? We, we don't have time to discuss all that here today, but uh, you, you'll see that they're, they're also saying, okay, it, it helps glyphosate, it helps glufosinate, um, and, and status uh, from K-State. So it, it's it's a good reason to put it in the tank. It's helping everything out. So, so what are our corn application recommendations? You can use it on seed corn, field corn, and popcorn, both yellow and white. It's safe. We've done all that at testing. It's going to be eight ounces per acre. And we, you know, when you tank mix it with another product, it's not a standalone product. Um, it, it's a contact only product. So application, the spray volume is very, very important. Minimum of 15 gallons. You got to have the right droplet size and, and, and the spray tips to achieve that. We got to get have good spray pressure so we can push it down in the cannon because these weeds kind of overlap each other. We kind of that, that movement will help uh, increase control. So will, will the, the use of the adjuvants, your, your, your NIS or your, or your COCs, AMS fertilizer added to the tank. That's not a problem whatsoever. It's been, that, that's, that's standard. So it's not a problem chemically wise. Um, so we, are, we already discussed that the application timings. So what are the targets? Where, where should you be looking to, to uh, position this uh, product? Okay, the resistant acres, you know, the growers that are already having problems, they're complaining about their other chemistries not working anymore. Half the time that that is probably environmental or it's resistance. And we can show that adding tough to the tank is going to help control that and prevent further selection for the resistance. And it's going to help stop the spread of, of those weeds, uh, weed seeds. Um, so you know, even on your farm or be a good neighbor and help your, 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 your neighbors out, uh, okay? Seed corn acres, corn on corn, that is a very high uh, resistance selection scenario. Put tough in the tank, let's preserve the other chemistries, and, and that would just go also to your progressive grower. You know, the guys that are in it for the long haul, they're not just renting land. Um, let, let, let's preserve these chemistries that we have today because there's not much new coming. Reduce the seed bank going into your, your rotational crop. If you're going to soybeans, your options are much more limited. Let, let's reduce the problem for next year. And let's be good neighbors and uh, stop spreading this around. So let's quickly talk about Tougher. It, it's a, our premix product, uh, two and a half pounds of period eight plus three quarters of pounds of miso. That's it. and we're going to be recommending 16 ounces per acre of uh, of that product. And it's equivalent to if you were just tank mixing eight ounces of Tough and three ounces of miso. It's going to be all dispersion formulation, no compatibility problems. We, we've been looking at this for for a number of years now. Um, and, and this is the data here looking at Palmer Amaranth on the left, summary of, of nine different trials. Uh, it, 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 you can just see the, the consistency here, adding tough to the tank. It's also a good slide to, to promote tough. 
it's peace of mind. So if you're just putting out meso by itself or a motif, you, you can, there's very inconsistent control. You put tough in the tank or, or use the, the premix, you're going to get a very high level of control and consistency over time. So here are our uh, regional sales managers where you could get more information uh, 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 from them, or you can simply visit our website, puffonweeds.com. Thank you.